Hey gang, welcome back to the garage. As you know, I do a lot of different things. When I work on classic cars, I restore Mustangs and stuff like that. But I also used to have a body shop. And occasionally I get some friends who have some collision problems. Now, just to give you some idea, this is a 2012 Toyota Camry. And they actually had two incidents. One, they hit a deer on the side, which broke the headlight. And then, not a week later... They had an altercation with something else, another vehicle of some sort. So it mangled the headlight, the fender, pushed the fender back into the door, and rolled the edge of the hood. And of course there's some other previous damage, I think, from the deer hit here. So they went to their insurance company, and the insurance company, they said, we're going to total it. And they said, well, we'd rather not. This is a pretty decent car. So they asked me if I would help them out. So I'm going to open this up, get a look at it, and see if I can't fix this car for them, make it drivable again. And what that'll involve, more than likely, well, obviously, is a, at least a right front fender, possibly a hood, possibly the bumper cover. I'm not sure about the grill, and it will need both headlights. So I'll have to take a look at everything and see what I can save. And, uh, well, we'll go from there and see what I can, <laughs> what I can make happen. I'm not sure how good the lighting is at this point because it's dark outside but I'm trying to do what I can this came apart in about 30 minutes now part of that is experience knowing where to look for clips and different things the hardest part was actually getting the rocker panel piece off there are push pins that go up through and there's also push pins that go into the rocker panel so when you remove those push pins and there is a screw at the front here and there was a screw at the back coming in from the rear and to the rear. So once those screws were out, all the push pins out, the clips have to be pried away from the uh, body. So that's what these are here, these, these pins. And they just all popped right out. This is where the push pins were all along there. There was a screw here coming from the rear, and I said there was one from the front. Let me make sure. Yeah, well, there was a, kind of a combination push pin screw holder thing there, and then there was one from the bottom as well. Other than that, that was pretty easy. Uh, on the bottom of the bumper cover was a series of 10 millimeter basically screws. So I took all those off and then it was already broken loose on the edges where it meets the inner fender. And that's just a plastic pin anyway. You can unscrew this thing to get it out of there. And then it just snaps in around the base of the fender. I don't know that I'm going to take this fender off just yet. Uh, I know this headlight has to come out. But I wanted to see what kind of damage there is over here. 
and really it's not as bad as I had thought it would be. Um, there's not much bent. So like this little bracket here, which I can bend back into place. Uh, the bottom of it here, I don't know if this is, this looks like it's pushed back a little bit. And I think this shape is consistent. It looks like it's the same from what I can see right here. Now this is, this one's bent as well, but I'm just kind of saying it, it's not bad. The other piece that's bent is this bracket. I've already taken the bolts loose. This bracket holds the reservoir for your windshield washer fluid. And there was a bolt there. I took it loose because it was binding. And this piece, it could probably be straightened. But if I can get another one, I'll just bolt it on and go from there. The other thing is these little standoffs. These have collapsed. They should be have a space under them. And you can see the shape is all wrong. So this needs to come up and forward. This bolt should probably be right about here somewhere. Same way with this one. This bolt should probably be up here somewhere. And then this bracket for the where the hinge is is bent as well. And I may be able to straighten that one out and just keep it. I'd rather not replace the hinges if I don't have to. But that's a good start for day one. I started at 7 o'clock. It's now 7.30. And uh, I'm going to see what I can find online. I'm going to try to get parts from like Marketplace. And uh, try to use original parts that have been in the junkyard but we'll see what happens all right I thought I would give you another look at the car in the daylight a little bit better to see and I also separated the parts out here on the side now I mentioned earlier about straightening out certain things and I'm still going to do that later on when I get the fender because once I have the fender that'll tell me where these little brackets need to be or what shape they need to be I did go to a salvage yard this morning and I wanted this bracket and to see if they had the fender unfortunately the fender was too beat up and I wasn't gonna buy it and rework it but I did get this bracket so what that does is it tells me this needs to be bent back this way because it wouldn't be sitting like that it's gonna come forward and match up to this uh, reservoir bottle so that was worth the trip just to get that taken care of now what I'm going to probably end up doing is getting new headlights from Amazon, fender, and bumper cover all from Amazon. I'll probably just straighten out this hood, take care of that, and have to repaint it, which is not a big concern. This fender obviously is not usable. The headlight and the headlight we know are no good. The grill appears to be okay. And I wanted to point this out. The bumper cover, hmm, it could be usable. But the paint's cracked all over it. There's, you know, a, a center punch there. And this is punched out. So this is going to take a lot just to rework it to make it paintable. And it is not a Toyota part. This is a Keystone. So this was a replacement piece anyway. If it were an original bumper cover, I might consider saving it. But I'm just going to order another one, and those are also available on Amazon. So I'm off to a good start. I think uh, I'll get these parts on order. And before I make any actual repairs, I want to have the fender, bumper cover, have all those pieces, and then I can adjust everything to where it needs to go. pieces and parts I think that's going to have to sit in the sun a while. <laughs> New grill.
Let's hope it's in good shape. And it looks like it is. Now, I chose this fender specifically because of these stickers. Kappa certified. Kappa certified means it's as close to original as you're going to get. The other stuff that's out there that's a lot cheaper, it sort of fits. But this should bolt exactly in the right place on that car and mimic the original very closely. I still am waiting on the pieces that go on the edge here. I didn't realize that the one on the on the passenger side it was damaged. The little thing, the retainer for the uh, bumper cover. I ordered some of those too. So I guess I'll have to get that bumper cover out in the sun and everything is going to get scuffed um, and the, the bumper cover is actually ready for paint it's already in primer and it's also Kappa certified this I'll probably scuff it I don't know if I'll prime it or not I don't know if I need to I might just leave it the way it is and paint it obviously scuff it first though Okay, there's a few things that I need to do now that I have the new fender. One, I want to set the fender in place and try to adjust these tabs that are bent and anything else that may be bent slightly out of the way. So I'm going to open up the hood. There we go. Get the hood opened up, take the new fender, and set it up in place. Now again, I said this is a Kappa certified fender. So it should, should fit right on the car. Now there's some things that were bent that will have to be addressed, obviously. But I can put the bolts in where the where they are in the A pillar and down below. And that'll help me assess where I need to go with the rest of it. And of course, the inner fender is still in the way, but that's okay. And these things are like, like butter. So, like, if you need to reshape something or change, there's really not much you can do or need to do for that to happen. So what I'm looking at is stuff like the, the way the door lines up with the fender. And if I need to make some adjustments, I can just literally just reshape it by pulling on it slightly. That's how these cars are. And that's how it's going to be <laughs> moving forward. So, lock that down. And I can say these little tabs, what I'll have to do is pry them up into position. I'll make sure the hood shuts. Get these set to where the gap lines up and that's that's how I'm going to assess everything and make my adjustments. So it really shouldn't take much at this point to get this in place. So I'll be going back and forth a few times obviously making adjustments but yeah we're, we're basically almost there already.
So the fender's in place. It's not 100% perfect, but it will do for this project. Not building a show car, putting it back to being a driver. So these little standoffs, you can see I just bent them with my hands. Didn't take really much effort. That one back there, that was rotated back, and I grabbed it with some channel locks and rotated it forward. This bracket, I just had to bend that flange back into place, and everything seems to be lining up. Now, the next thing I want to check is the headlight. So I have a pair of headlights. I got these off of Amazon. They don't come with the wiring bundle uh, or any lights in them, so I'm going to reuse the ones that were in the old lights. But what I need to look at is this location, this location, in here where it mounts to the fender, and I have to look and see if I have that piece because it looks like it's part of this assembly that holds the bumper, uh, catches the bumper, and I don't have that piece for that side. So I know that there's a bolt that goes in there, and I just need to kind of rebend the tabs if I need to and get them back in place. There's also that bolt up on top. So I'm going to have to see. I don't think I have. Let me look. Let's see what I have left of. Oh, there we go. So I do have pieces and parts that I can pull off of this and put on the new fender. So let me get those swapped out. Oh, I do have that bolt. Good. I just don't have that black piece. All right. Let me get those on and see what it looks like. So I think that's looking pretty close. You know, the beauty of these cars is you can push and pull on this metal and move it wherever you want. You can't do that on an old Mustang. <laughs> you can ma manipulate this quite a bit. So this is looking okay. I realize I'm gonna have to do some more work up here on the, uh, the hood where it was rolled down. I've straightened some of that out and that will get addressed. But what I need to also do is work on this side. Now the headlight should fit probably easier than it did on that side. However, I need to fix this. So the transition of this fender, this is bent way over. Like this should be almost on this plane. If you look at this fender over here, see this outer body portion and then this short flange is just slightly transitioned so big difference there I'll have to work on getting that pulled out and again this is just when I say pulled out I mean I can do it mostly with my hands but I'll have to test fit the light make sure all the mounts are going to work and uh, go on from there so after some fine tuning and I know it's going to need some body work there but that's pretty minor and I'm able to save this fender and this is just a mock-up. I may do some more fine-tuning on that once I have all of the pieces to test. But uh, I'm happy with how that looks, I think. Now, the other thing I did is I adjusted the hood a little more. And what I mean by that is I took a mallet and just kind of knocked it up. This hood, I, I can see it's been repaired before. I didn't see it earlier. But there's a bunch of cracks right I don't know if you can see it or not, right there. See it across the light going through it? So that's telling me there's Bondo in this hood. And it's going to have more because we're saving the hood. Now, I did have the hood shut. I want to make sure that things are going to line up. So what I have is the original grill piece, which actually sits on top of the headlights. So one pin goes there, one pin goes there, and it appears, at least I, I think it appears, that that's going to line up. I mean, I'm, I'm within enough space that for a plastic push pin to get it in there. So, you know, it's, it's up against the headlight. 
on both sides. I could probably tweak this a little. Right now, this is just, and I'm not sure about this piece right here, to be honest, um, because it should have the whole uh, grill, or being the bumper underneath it, and I'm not sure if this piece is supposed to go into that hole. It looks like it should, but I don't know for sure. But what this will tell me, in some way, is how the hood fits. Now, I know, everything's not in place like it should be. But, if I pull the grill up, it seems to be that it's it's close, or close enough, in this case. You know, this, this isn't going to be, again, a show car. It's going to be something you can continue driving. So, I see the gasket sticking out there, but... I think it's going to be okay. All right. Uh, the only other piece that I have t that I can test is the filler piece that goes on top of the radiator. So I can set that in. Not that it's going to matter because that's not going to change anything, but it'll at least help me with the uh, any kind of alignment. So let's see how that looks. Well, that piece really doesn't help much at all. You know, it, you know, it shows me where all the pins need to go, and it reveals that there's these holes on either side here that I really don't know what goes there. Now, I know this car was worked on before, so maybe something is missing, but if I take this out, uh, there's nothing there. Nothing. And I don't see anything it should go there. You know, there's a push pin. But it doesn't tell me anything. So, with that, I now am sure that this piece has to go, this bracket has to come forward um, for this to match up. I don't see anything else that could fit to that. And this isn't supported any other way. Now, there is, well, as I look again, yeah, make sure... There's push pin there and there. That'll help support the grill. And unless there was something else that tied in to these locations, which I don't know. Um, the other thing, I have these push pins on the bumper cover. These connect to the headlights. So there is a tab. I don't know if you can see it very well. In there. There it is. So that's where that connects to the headlights so that should be okay and I can sort of push that bumper cover up into place to see if it's going to fit um, and I may just do that but that's probably as far as I'm going to get at the moment and, and I'm still debating on this tab here because that bracket does not appear to be bent and that's that's got to come forward at least an inch inch and maybe a quarter for that to fit and I don't see that it's out of shape or has moved so I'm gonna have to look at that a little harder too all right I figured it out it wasn't the bracket that was bent it was the center brace was compressed so I could I literally just grabbed it put some weight behind it and it pulled right out and it lined up so I have that one lined up and this one down here, which is going to hold the bumper cover, is within range. So maybe a little more tweaking on that. However, everything else is fitting on like it should. And I did put the cover up against it to make sure the headlights look right. Now the sides, of course, I can't, I can't lock those in. But this, this goes right up in the, in the place where it needs to be. So I think we're good there. And then on this side, of course, I don't have any kind of retainer, so I can't, you know, just put it in place. But it, it's it's really, really close. So, at this point, I think I'm good overall. Now, there's probably a little more tweaking that will happen just to fine-tune it. But I want to make sure everything was going to fit like it should. Now, I have the other cover. It's been sitting out in the sun. I had a broom handle inside of it to stretch it out and so it's much better shape now and of course I'll need to do repair work or body work here on this fender 
the hood, prep that fender, put primer on it, and spray, get ready to spray everything. And I have purchased um, paint and clear coat from a uh, small paint store not too far from here, so I think it's going to turn out pretty nice. Okay. <laughs> Let me say, I already knew there was filler here, but I didn't realize there was this much filler on this car. So obviously this had been hit before. Uh, I did not want to remove all this because the shape is, is pretty consistent, even though it's out of shape, let's say. But I still have cracks over here, so I'm going to remove that as well. At least get the cracks out and then see what we end up with. Okay, the crack was in here and it was all this area right here. And it's weird because that's actually straighter than most of it. So all of this has filler. I'm not going to strip all this out. I'm not going to weld those holes shut. This is not a restoration. So I'm going to fill this back up with filler and get it back to the shape that it belongs. And that's all I can do, really. I'm not even going to remove all this. It's just, it's just already, it's already bonded and attached. And I don't want to, I might take a little more out right here, but I don't want to, I don't want to remove all this because this, this stuff runs all the way over in this direction. I can tell, but I don't see any other cracks. So I'll probably go over this with the DA just to clean it up, but then I'm gonna rebuild that with filler because that's all I can really do. Alright, so this was the first round of filler that I put on, and I've gotten it close, but obviously there's a void right here, a couple pinholes, and this dips just slightly right here where all that was built up. So I'm going to add more filler to this, obviously, but when you're doing this sort of stuff and you're block sanding, try not to just let it eat away at the filler. Like I'm trying to, I will um, block sand right and I will crisscross and change directions and let the weight of the block or the weight of my hand push on the back of the block rather than the front and that way I can contour and follow the shape that is there without just knocking that down because this is this is nothing there there's nothing underneath this um, for you know probably an eighth of an inch or better I don't know but I've also uh, done work on this side. I've got to add a little filler on this edge. I didn't get enough there. 
and just probably skim coat the whole thing over again so it's ready to go and then same thing on this fender I cleaned off all that metal took it down to bare metal and then put filler in there uh, and I'll have to you know obviously sand that down and shape it as well there's also been locations where I found like pinholes in the, in the paint so I went over this whole thing with 180 and exposed any flaws that I could find and hit them with a little bit of filler and just trying to dress it dress it up as much as I can while I'm here and then uh, see what, what we can end up with. Okay, I think I am ready to go on this hood and the fender over there. So the plan will be to take this in the paint booth. I will back mask it, meaning I will put paper sticking the tape to the back side and letting the paper hang down so that it doesn't overspray up underneath. Some of these small areas where there's bare metal, I'll shoot that with some self-etch. I think there's only one spot that will need it on that. And I will shoot some self-etch on this area here. I did not plan to do the whole fender um, and I may have to change that because right here this is bare metal there was a little pit that was rusted so I sanded that out I'll put some self etch there. I don't know if I actually need to put primer all the way back uh, I may be able to get away with the self etch we'll see but I did not want to prime this whole fender I just wanted to prime this forward section here. All of this has been hit with scotch Bright and Initial wipe down, I always use um, Windex to wipe off the dust. And then what I'll do is when it's, they're in the booth, I'll wipe them down with a wax and grease remover and prep them for spray. Everything else has been gone over again with uh, Scotch-Brite, but the areas that I had sanded with the 180, I went over with 400. So I could try to eliminate some of the scratches. I know they're still there, but the primer will take care of all that. So I'm going to get this all prepped up, mix up some high build primer, and hopefully get them sprayed today yet. Here's what I was talking about with the paper hanging on the back side of the flange. So I have it all the way around. I did a couple, hit a couple spots with the self-etch, and that also gives me a chance to kind of see the shape and make sure that everything is right. So I'm pretty happy with how this looks right now. I do want to have the paper drape a little bit off the edge so I can get a little bit of paint on the edge or underneath that little uh, flange there. Same way over here, again I shot the self edge and that helped me see the shape a little better. So now I'm going to mix up the primer and shoot it on these panels. Okay, I did spray 
the hood as I said and of course the driver's side fender and you can see now the line really nice very happy with how that turned out I had enough material left over that I decided to spray the other fender why not get them all the same color don't worry about it later now at this point what I'll end up doing is pulling the paper off I'm gonna let this cure for probably a at least a day maybe two and then come back and block sand this smooth and make sure everything is good to go I think it uh, you know has a buildup right now of primer because I, I did put several coats on this front section just so I'd have enough that I could sand it down and be comfortable with it so once I get that prepped all sanded ready to go the next step of course will be putting paint on everything so I'm starting on the hood and I'm using the DA with 400 grit paper. Now I'm not being aggressive. I'm letting the paper do the work. I'm not pushing very hard on the DA. Just moving it around and slowly revealing the texture that comes naturally with spraying anything like this. So once I get the basics taken care of, I move to the sides and I gently work those transitions I do not try to cut uh, cut on the edge, so if there's a, a corner or something like that, I try to avoid that as much as possible, and that way I'm not breaking through accidentally. So along with that, once I get moving well on the hood, uh, get everything pretty much established, I go over to the fender, and of course I'm taking the DA again. The fender's a lot trickier because the areas are very small. So the transitions are all over the place. There's corners everywhere. So you have to be very careful and using the DA and just gently use kind of the edge of the DA, but not, again, not dig in. Just kind of let it glide over. All right, so I have sanded down the hood. Very, very happy with it. Again, there's some sm small spots that I can't, I'm just not gonna remove, um, but I'm very happy with it. Using the DA sander, works well uh, it's it, it, I mean there's there's really no texture left so when you do this if you're out in the try to get it out in the Sun if you can and that way you, the Sun creates a shadow for you that you can see any kind of texture in it and you want this as smooth as possible so there shouldn't be any kind of little bumps or anything uh, that would show up later on whenever you're spraying the paint so the hoods ready to go the fender is also ready to go very happy with how that looks I will prep the other fender and then I think I think maybe depending on how much space I actually have in the paint booth I may just do the hood and the fenders by themselves and just do the bumper cover separately because it's gonna be a tight squeeze to have everything in there I don't know if you can hear it or not. I have my mini split running and I have a double fan, small fan, circulating the air up above. The idea is that it draws the heat down into the shop area. Okay, I have taped up the hood. I, I did the back mask again and cleaned it all up. Used the uh, wax and grease remover that I've always used. So it's ready to spray. Pretty happy with it. I also have both fenders mounted on this little stand that I, uh, I've had, but um, I can't put anything else in here. I've got the Mustang in the way, but this stand is probably what I would use for the bumper cover anyway so I really don't have the room 
uh, or I can't just put the bumper cover in here because it needs to be painted just like it sits on the car. Just like these fenders, I have them situated like they would be on the car. Now, there's something else I want to show you. I did break through the primer, the gray primer, in a couple of spots. You can see it up here. <clears throat> and I also did a little bit on the front edge of the hood. When that happens, rather than reprime the whole fender or mix up another batch, you can do this. You can use self-etching primer. This is SEM, part number 39683. And just mist over that area and shade it back in if you're using, a, especially with a lighter color. Uh, the gray that's going on this car will probably hide this anyway. But you can just put a little bit of self-etch on these areas and that'll take care of it because the self-etch, it will lock it in and you won't have any problems with that. I've done this many times and haven't had an issue. So at this point, I'll be mixing up some paint. Um, I'll show you basically what I have. So this is a paint supply place that's up the road for me in the next town. And I can only assume, you know how that is, uh, this can says Capsi on it. And it's one quart. Uh, I'm not sure what, what they're writing here is if that's a code or something. But this is one quart. So this mix is one to one. And that'll give me basically half a gallon of base coat. So along with that, temperatures are down. So I use HET either 1370 or 1380 in here and HET uh, medium reducer is 70 to 85 degrees. I'm right at the minimum for using this but this is what I will mix with the paint so that I have a, a uh, sprayable mix. Uh, the HET 1380 85 to 95 degrees so very limited uh, as to what you can do and my shop temperature inside right now is about 72 degrees and it's about 70 maybe 69 70 degrees outside so I'm at the bare minimum for spraying this stuff so I'll get it mixed up and start spraying and also I will be spraying with this uh, master I don't know if I remember what it is master HP Pro Series master Elite Pro or something like that um, let me see if I have, I, I keep the boxes for this stuff so I have more information. Uh, Master Pro Series Elite Performance Spray Gun. This comes with three different tips and the current tip in here is a 1.4 and that is basically what you know, I'm going to use. I use that for the primer, I'm going to use it also for the paint. There are other tips that I have. Uh, this is a 1.3. And it comes with a 1.3, a 1.4, and a 1.8. And there will be a link in the description below if you're interested in one of those paint guns. I'm not putting a heavy coat on, I'm just tacking.
Metallic paints are difficult. Very difficult. I'm going to let this flash and then come back. Well, here it is with base coat on it. I think the color looks pretty good. Now, a lot of times, what I end up doing is once I spray the color on, I just kind of fan across, not really being direct. Uh, I just stay off the panel and just fan across, trying to get the texture and the color to be consistent all the way across. And then the fenders are also done. I think they look pretty good. Um, need to get some clear coat on these. And then we'll move on from there and that, that'll take care of at least, at least these panels right now. So again, I've got some clear coat from this uh, paint shop up the road. Um, that's the name of their business, I guess. And this is a two to one mix. So two parts of clear to one part of hardener. I didn't buy a whole gallon. They were able to sell me basically a half gallon mix or you know material. So save me a little money there. But um, again, mix is two to one. And I'm going to spray it probably with the same gun and just finish it up. I'll get that later. Yeah. I'm not sure I helped it with that line.
Again, kind of a tack coat. Gonna end up with probably too much right there, but that's. I tried to hide that uh, the hair that was in there. Gonna let this flash. And we'll come back. Doesn't look too bad. Let's see if we can't finish this up. I won't have enough to finish the fender, but I'll see what I can get done. Well, here's a look at the hood with paint and clear coat. Again, I know there's trash in this. Uh, I'll probably put it on the car and may sand out the little dust nibs and just buff it just to clean it up. The fender turned out pretty good. I have the other one sitting out in the sun right now. Um, I did have a bit of a problem. I did have some runs. Now the reason for that is my fault because I was trying to add some extra clear on the hood so that it would level out a little bit and hide some of the dust nibs. However, I added some reducer and I probably added a little bit too much reducer. So while it did make the hood lay out really nice, uh, it caused a problem with the fenders. So both fenders have some runs on them. Again, I'll put these out in the sun, let them cure, and come back and probably have to sand those off. Not something I wanted to do, but I can't just let it go. I'll take care of it and fix it back up. So that'll be probably all I show on this part of it. Uh, I do need to paint the, the bumper cover, so that'll be coming in next, and we'll see how that goes. Well, I have clear coat on the bumper cover. And you know, I thought I was free and clear I walked away, came back, yep, two sags right there. Can't win, but if that's all there is, I can live with it. I don't need it to be 100%, I just need it to be something I can work with. So I can take care of those little spots. Um, uh, just frustrating that you have to deal with this. You know, temperature doesn't help. You got to have warmer temperatures, and I'm I'm fighting that all the way. So I will get all those pieces taken care of and cleaned up, and the next thing will be putting it all together. It's time to put this car together. Now, 
you can see I already have the hood on it I had some help putting the hood on and I did put the liner in place and I did that to get the hood out of the way as I was taking care and waiting for other parts so that's taken care of and in here I have the rocker panels the new headlights the freshly painted new bumper cover uh, I have the little trim pieces that go on top of the fenders this is what I was waiting on was the bumper cover retainers so I have both of those this is the filler panel that goes above the radiator and then over here I have the repaired driver side fender and then the replacement passenger side fender so it should be pretty simple to put all this together I say that should be and uh, I'm gonna just kinda do it probably in time-lapse more than anything and if there's anything I need to point out I will reference it but let's see if I can get this put together and then the plan is to give this car a good bath you can see it's got a lot of dust and stuff on it and it just needs wash to look good so let's get moving It's together. Now, I am okay with how this car looks. As I've said it many times, this is just a driver. And the gaps are okay. The color looks good. A little problem with the bumper doesn't quite fit the way it should. It sticks out just a little bit in front of these headlights. And I'm not sure 100% why. Now this car I know has been hit at least once before and that could be part of the problem. But the hood lines up with the fenders, so that we know is correct. The bumper cover attaches to the fenders. The doors line up with the fenders. And I don't see any structural damage that pushes anything rearward. And I can't bring anything forward either. The headlights are mounted on the, uh, the mount holes where they're supposed to be. And so I can't, I can't do anything else with it. So... Um, you know, this, this kind of stuff does irritate me because I want it to be as close to dead on as I can get it. But in this case, I just have to kind of live with the way it is. Now I'm going to go uh, wash the car up and make sure it looks good. And see if the uh, owners are happy with it. Alright, here it is. All cleaned up. Washed the whole car. Minor detailing, you know, just trying to make it look good. Again, the color works out really nice. And this car, as I said before, had been wrecked, repainted. They have probably um, blended the color into the doors and different things like that. But overall, I'm happy with it. And I'm hoping the owners are happy with it as well. So we shall see. They're going to come get it tomorrow. So that'll be the end of this video. I hope you found some information that may help you if you're trying to do some work like this. If nothing else, I hope you're at least entertained for the period of time that I made this video. So that'll be it. And once again, thanks for watching. And until next time, take care of yourselves.
See ya. Bye.